Hello, good evening and welcome to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show. I'm your host, Nigel Honeyburn. But of course, you already knew I was going to say that. I know what you're thinking. There just aren't enough great British horror films of the 1930s concerning clairvoyance, right? Well, prepare to be enlightened, as the diminutive but very visible Claude Rains plays a con artist clairvoyant who gains the power to actually predict the future, yet is unable to prevent it from happening. The clairvoyant also happens to be the alternate title to tonight's atmospheric classic, The Evil Mind. But you knew I was going to say that too. Atmosphere so thick you could cut it with a knife. But they don't like to give me anything sharp, you know. Anyway, we'll be right back with the Schlocky Horror Picture Show after these community annoyances. And welcome back to the Schlocky Horror Picture Show. Don't worry, I'm not going to carry on with the clairvoyance jokes. But of course you knew I was going to say that. I'm sorry, I just can't seem to stop. Anyway, what drew audiences to the evil mind, a Gainsborough picture, was its stars. So, who is really the greatest scream queen of all time? Is it Barbara Steele or Ingrid Pitt, who starred in many classic horror films of the 60s? Or could it be the lovely Elsa Lancaster, who portrayed the ultimate female fantastic creation in Bride of Frankenstein? Or screamers like Carolyn Munro, Leanna Quigley or Sybil Danning? Who can claim so many horror projects in their busiest years? Well, all these women are worthy names to toss around, but for many, the individual to remember for real queen status remains a Canadian actress from Alberta named Faye Ray. In 1933, Faye Ray was being threatened on movie screens by more than just King Kong. Next, in The Vampire Bat by, surprisingly enough, a bat. And then in Mystery of the Wax Museum, threatened by... uh, wax and so on, as she faultlessly played hapless heroines in horrendous hazards. For the second and third time, she also had to endure Lionel Atwell's formidable villainy. Consequently, the year 1933 was to be Faye's busiest, as 11 different movies took to the screen with her name in the cast. Faye Ray passed away in her Manhattan apartment in 2004 from natural causes, close to a month before celebrating her 97th birthday. And she's looking quite well. The immortal paramour of the apes had been approached by director Peter Jackson about appearing in his remake of King Kong, but declined with an inarguable finality. Some actors will go to extraordinary lengths to avoid working in New Zealand. Claude Rains returned to his homeland after his recent success in Hollywood with The Invisible Man. I've always enjoyed the great acting of Claude Rains and found his overacting even more amusing. It wasn't until after this film that Reigns went on to become a great dramatic actor, appearing in Casablanca and many greater starring roles. Reigns never needed cue cards. He always remembered his many long lines to perfection, something considered a remarkable feat in Hollywood today. I'm not even going to mention his zillions of television appearances. No? Other pleasing appearances include a relatively unknown cast of now recognisable character actors, including Donald Clattrop, Jack Rain, and Frank Sellier. Ronald Shiner can be glimpsed during a crowd scene, DJ Williams is a member of the jury, and a 15-year-old Graham Moffat appears as a page. Moffat later found fame as a prominent member of the Will Hayes comedy cast as Albert. And, of course, there's Athol Stewart. Athol. Athol Stewart who seemed to play nothing but lords, knights, squires, captains, colonels, governors. He seemed to be the ultimate authority figure of his time. Sir Michael Elias Balkin was a British film producer known for his work with Ealing Studios. When he was invited to head Ealing in 1938, he readily agreed. Under his benevolent leadership and surrounded by a reliable team of directors, writers, technicians and actors, Ealing became the most famous British studio in the world despite turning out no more than six feature films a year. Quality over quantity seems to be a tradition. The great anthology film Dead of Night went the day well, and of course the Ealing comedies were all released during his time there. In over 230 films, he worked with Alfred Hitchcock, Basil Dead and Michael Ralph, me, and many other greats of the film world. And he was made a Knight Commander of the Order of the British Empire of the Yada 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 in 1948. After World War II, his style of nice films were on the way out, so Ealing Studios started going down the tubes during the 1950s. 
and Balkan's creative control at other companies waned considerably. The last film on which he worked as an executive producer was Tom Jones back in 1963, after which he continued to encourage young directors funding low-budget experimental work, in other words, pretentious rubbish. I shouldn't really say that, but, I mean, he is dead after all, and it's not like any of those up-and-coming directors are ever going to give me a job, are they? Anyway, enough of my complaining. It's not as if anybody listens. Let's just get back to the future with the clairvoyant. I mean the evil mind. The first film to tell you what's going to happen next. On purpose. And gentlemen, all the best tricks, like all the best things in life, are simple, though sometimes hard to explain. I do not profess to be a superman. The powers I possess are possessed, more or less, by you all. Mademoiselle René is among you. She will ask you to pass her any small, a personal article. The waves of thought emanating from her will come across the footlights to me. And to put it simply, it will be as if Mademoiselle René were my own electric battery, motivating the force which gives me the power to retransmit to you my knowledge of what is in her mind. And by the hidden mysteries of the powers of thought, I will describe the object she is holding. Personal article. You, sir? What about you? No, really? You, miss, perhaps you have something. Oh, no, oh, Uncle Tom. Yes, yes the young lady has something. Oh, right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you ready? Absolutely, mademoiselle. I have a very charming thing here. Can you tell me what it is? It is... a lipstick. Got the first one right anyway. Oh, that's beautiful. May I? Thank you very much. I should like you to tell me what I have now. What you have now is a tie pin. Yeah, oh, all right. Yes, but there's many escape tricks for cup on the lip. Miss, ask him to tell you what this is. Any personal articles, ladies and gentlemen. 
Anything you please. Deborah, this one's a bit unusual. Oh, I'm sure you'd like to take me up to tell you what this is. Oh, yes. What have I this time? That, mademoiselle, is a watch. A wristwatch. There you are. Time. Watch. Hmm? And now, Mademoiselle Rene will repeat her performance for the benefit of the ladies and gentlemen in the dress circle. Here, yeah, that's all very well, but what about this? Quiet. Quiet. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Her way. How do I get up to the circle? Round the front. Take it off his face. Again. I don't want to take it. I'm part of the show. You mean you're one of the artists? Yes, can't you see my makeup? Artists aren't allowed in front without permission. I've got permission, and the stage is waiting. We'll have to ask the manager at the ticket office. Why can't I go through this? Because it doesn't lead to the search. Well, will you please tell me how I can get up to the circle? Mademoiselle Rene, up there yet? No, she's not here. She's left you. Oh. Where's the old girl got to? Hi, <laughs> what have I got here? Here. It's a letter. What's it about? From your wife. Well, that's where you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> about your wife. What did he say? <laughs> he said it was about your wife. <laughs> that's right. It's from a hospital. That letter is two days old. Tell me she's worse. This isn't the act they rehearsed. I know what it is. And you. I see. A railway journey. I see. Ring down. Max, I won't find it. What's the matter with it? Doesn't look like a fight. I don't know. I don't know. 
as I know, my father had it. Gift to see. Take your seats, please, for the first dinner service. First dinner service, please take your seats. Well, it may have been real clairvoyance, but how can you be sure? Anyway, I think it's dangerous. No matter, my sweet. It only happened once. It hasn't happened since. It may never happen again. I hope it does. We will make our fortunes. These things come and go. No one knows why. Perhaps there was someone in the theater, Max, in sympathy with him. Sort of, um... Sort of... You know, uh, like you say in the act, sort of battery to your wireless receiver. That's it. No, I'll be a clairvoyant. This being an English railway, the menu will be tomato soup, roast beef, apple tart, cheese and biscuits, coffee, cook and sex. Ha, ha. <laughs> Now, uh, Mr. Prophet, you show your skill. What about Blue Boy for the 2.30 tomorrow? I'm supposed to be a clairvoyant, not a tipster. Oh, not much good foreseeing the future if you can't double the dough. Never count your chickens before they're hatched. Talking of chickens, what about this one? I've seen that girl before. That girl? Yes. I don't think... That girl... A journey. Did you pull that communication cord? This train will not get to a station. It will be an accident. Accident? What do you mean? Oh, darling, Excuse don't worry. Excuse me, sir. This is a very serious kind of a joke, isn't it? Oh. If it's advertisement you're after, you'll get all you want in the police court. There's a penalty of five pounds for this sort of thing. I tried if I wanted to get off this train. What for? I've told you once. Excuse me, guards. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do take your seats, please. Mother, Simon. I'm... I don't know why we're doing this. Shut up, Max. Now, come along, everybody. Get aboard again, please. You don't seem to realize we've stopped in a tunnel. I tell you to warn the rest of the passengers to get off the train. Are you coming aboard? No, I'm not. Very well, you stay here on your own responsibility. Are you the man? Get these people out of the tunnel, will you? Why'd you let them off the train? Now, don't argue. Look after these people. Now, stand clear, please. Come on, then, before the next train comes through. Hey, what are you doing on the train? They've just gone off the train. You mean to match the train? Yes, he stopped it. the section. Excuse me. Can I use the phone? No, no. I want to speak to my father. Oh, use that one then. Can you see the smash? Hello. 
to be the band. Hello? Oh, she's got a scope. Can you give me a London number? How many of them? Pete, 9,000. Yes, the Daily Sun. Here, none of your newspaper stuff here. I thought you wanted to speak to your father. I do. He's the owner of the paper. Oh, Christine, dear. How are you? Wait a moment. Hello. Sign. Hold your front page. You'll probably have to set it up again. Excuse me, please. Break my door down. All the big bugs in the variety business are waiting for you. Let them wait. But J.J. Bennett is amongst them. I once waited five hours for Mr. Emmett, and then he slipped out of the back door. And now he's waiting at your front door. I'm in no mood for business today. Mrs. Jones? Show Mr. Bimmett in. And what hey. have I here? A baggage. Don't drop me. I'm not in short. I want to talk business. Madam, your bath is ready. No, let us wait. One honorary go, and quickly, too. Farewell. I'm to meet Mr. Bimmett. Oh, one Good morning. May I present my wife? How do you do? I was just on my way to the bath. Excuse me. Good morning. You've probably heard of me. I'm James J. Bimeter. The Mr. Bimeter? Quite. Won't you come in? My partner. Uh, how are you, sir? My lady mother, the Duchess. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I happened to be in Manchester, and I received a call from uh, Mr. Coburn. Which Mr. Coburn? The Mr. Coburn. Well, to come straight to business, uh, Mr. Coburn was impressed by your, uh, shall we say, uh, performance in prophesying the Manchester train accident. He's going to give you a hundred pounds a week for four weeks at the London Paladrome. How much? He didn't say a hundred. He did, but it isn't enough. What? What are you saying, Max? <laughs> you may thank Mr. Coburn for the offer, but I am not in the market. You mean to say you ought to give more? I mean that the effort of true clairvoyance is infinitely fatiguing. And that's... You're getting thirty pounds a week at present. I want three hundred. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, Mr. Sam Leopold. Leopold can't pay more than Mr. Coburn. We'll see. Simon, show Mr. Leopold in. Just a moment. I'll make it 150. Uh, uh, good morning. 200. Will you walk into my parlor, said the spider to the fly? You're not worth a penny more. Mr. Dick Crow. Simon, show Mr. Crow in two. I'll make it 250. 300. You're loony. It's money for jam. 250? 300. It can't be done. You're sure? Certain. We'll see. W where are you going? To get a second opinion. Th my opinion's the only one you want. Let me tell you, you Mr. Tell Mr. him, not me. Anything the matter with him? Ah, oh, oh, I am offered 250 pounds a week. Any advance on 250? Going. Going. Swollen head. That's what's the matter with him. 300 pounds. Who does he think he is? I've been in this business for 25... What, you still here? Well, did you see them? All of them. What are they offering? 250? 300? Don't you want your hand? 300. I don't believe it. Will you pay? No, I won't. Good morning. Now, who's the 300 merchant? There wasn't one. I was bluffing. I thought he'd fall for it. Well, that's torn it. Well, of all this... Well, I think we might be able to fix it. Three hundred? Three hundred. And expensive. And expensive. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Hi. What about a contract? My word is my bond. But what about a bit on account? Oh, all right. There you are. There's a ten pound note. <laughs> Has Mr. Bennett a guy? My darling, we're a success. We go to the London Palladrome at 300 a week. And you can go and buy any personal article with rings on your fingers and bells on your toes. <laughs> Mr. Max is a flop. You're bound to admit it. Why, he's keeping people out of the theater. All this week, he hasn't told the audience a single thing. What Mr. Coburn wants is prophecy. Mr. Max is doing his best. Well, Mr. Coburn says his best is bad. 
What Mr. Coburn wants is property. Mr. Max can't turn them out like sausages. Well, Mr. Coburn says he's got it. He's a clairvoyant, not a pork butcher. Well, anyhow, Mr. Coburn wants results. Prophecies by Saturday, or you're through. Is that what Mr. Coburn says? His very words. What Mr. Coburn wants is prophecy. I'll prophesy a murder in a minute. Good morning. Darling, I don't think we shall be at the Pelodrome after this week. Well? Now, don't say I told you so. Why well, anywhere to keep quiet? Well, I suppose we've got to Saturday. Something may come to me. If only my mind weren't this awful blank. You know, the more I try to see things, the emptier it gets. And then all those people out front every night wanting me to tell them who's going to win the boat race or how many kittens the cat's going to have. I know how you feel. I think you ought to give it up. Yes, I do. I've been watching you. This constant effort, it, it's making you ill. Oh, I'm all right. Sweet. Can't we go back to the old house? Oh, ten pounds a week and lodgings for the night. We were happy then. Aren't you happy now? I've been happy. Well, don't you like this sort of life? I like it if you do. Hi. Sweet, what's the matter? Well, I... I haven't seen very much of you lately, have I? Well, isn't that a pleasant change? <laughs> I suppose it ought to be, but you've become a habit. Bad habit, darling. Oh, well, good women always marry the wrong men. <laughs> You'd pass in the crowd. But you know, Matt, you don't even need me in the act anymore. Rene, what's worrying you? Hello? Miss Sean? See me? All right, shut up. Christine Sean? Hmm, nice girl, that. Lovely head. Oh, thank you. Come in. Good morning, darling. Hello, Topsy. Good morning. Morning, Simon. Good morning. Hello, Simple. How do you feel? Uh, like yesterday's beer. Uh, you here, Bimmy, to go? I think the entire hotel did. Says what Mr. Coburn wants is prophecies. Well, that's not unreasonable. Max, my dear, I'm very worried about you. This clairvoyance business nearly killed your granddad. Oh, no, Topsy. I adore you, but you are an old pessimist. After all, Coburn's only human. One or two prophecies a week could keep him quiet. Simon, I cannot switch it on to order. I know. But don't you think you could help yourself out a bit? So what will you have? Performing elephants? A bearded lady? No, you know what I mean. Use your imagination. You mean fake. Come in. Sean, it's here, sir. All right, I'm coming. Where's my coat? Here it is. Thanks, sweet. Miss Sean? Yes, Christine Sean. She's an early bird. Street's not aired yet. Wait a minute, Max. Here you are. I'd like you to look your best for your public. Do I look different or something? No, you're just the same. Well, how are you, anyway? Terrible. Too early to be anything else. Well, you look a little worried. What's the matter? You don't miss much, do you? Sit down, I'll tell you. I wonder what she wants to see you for. I don't know. Something about the newspaper, I suppose. All right. Might be another boost. You know Coburn? The villain of the piece. Well, he and Father dined together last night. Oh, he was horrible about you. Did he use the word charlatan? Do you think I'm that? Do you think I'd be here if I did? Well, he may have been right. It was a bit of good, that would. I do hope it's nothing serious. So do I. Had enough shots for one day. What we need is some advertising. But your gift's the real one. The real. I'm no good to cope with. Good morning, Miss Charles. Good morning. Oh, Max, you forgot your hand. Thank you. How are you? Very well, thank you. Just sent by Hanson. Mark, very urgent. Thank you. What is it, Max? It's from Coburn. I know what that is. What Primitive said? Yes. From Saturday? From now. Oh, dear. There you are. Is there any answer, sir? What? 
no. I wish you'd tell me the window of the Derby, sir. Or Tullicus. What did you tell that page? Page? What do you mean? He asked you for the Derby winner. You told him something. Hi. Page! Page! Here, boy, boy. Here. Uh, what did Mr. Maximus say? What horse? He said Autolicus, sir. But there ain't no such animal. There is. I remember the name. Here, where's the betting? There it is. Get it in. Three to one. Danny, five to one. Faithful Charles, six to... It's not here. It's uh, here, it is. Look, Autolicus. A hundred to one. Autolicus. That's right. That's right. Autolycus will win the derby. Autolycus. Autolycus couldn't win the derby if he had ten legs when they fed him on dynamite. Autolycus. Not a horse. He's a joke. A joke or not, he'll win. You'll pardon me. This is my job. I've had 20 years experience on the turf. Not a matter of experience, Mr. Brooks. I know, and you know it's all superstition. All we've got to decide is whether we can afford to let the paper carry the story or not. But, sir, we'd be a laughing stock. Not when Autolycus wins. Danny, Maximus was right about the trade. Well, Tolicus can't win. They're only running him in the hope you'll fall dead to save expense of shooting him. Can't we run it in question form? Can't see foretell Derby winner. Then whatever happens, we're all right. I'm opposed to it. It's used and it's safe, sir. We'd be backing a loser. I'll take a chance. You win, my dear. All right, get the paper out. Hello, everybody. It's a brilliant scene down here at Epsom. The downs are crowded as usual, and the interest in this year's derby is greater than ever because of the sensational prophecy made by the great Maximus. I, I think this must be a record attendance. Braves are started. A really perfect collection of three arrows. Here comes Jenny Lynn, yesterday's favorite. She looks in fine condition. And Hesperus. There's Tiger Man. I like the look of him. Hello, and here comes Autolycus, the horse tipped to win by Maximus, the clairvoyant. It seems incredible that one man should have such influence. In a moment, I'll speak to him. Jenny Lynn's the obvious bet for today. On form, there's nothing to touch her. Although Tiger Man has certainly shown real promise recently. Yes, yes, I learned my little piece on the way down. But I say I can't believe what happened to my wife. Forget my the last time I saw this horse run was at Newbury. He finished strongly on a mile and a quarter. As for Autolycus, despite Mr. Maximus's assurances, I'm afraid I can't see him finishing the course. Still, as they say, the Derby's always a gamble. They're going over to the start now. I think we've just got time. Here's Mr. Max. Max can see. Good old Max. Bless his heart. Um, uh, hello, everybody. Um, I, I can't say much because they're almost ready to start. Um, as regards Autolycus, well, it, it uh, just came to me, and, uh, well, th th that's that. I events may prove I'm wrong, but I think I'm right, and, uh, well, that's all. Uh, goodbye. Thank you, Mr. Maximus. Now, they're lining up at the starting gate. They're under starter's orders. They're, they're, they're moving up. They're moving up. Any moment now. Come on! A perfect start. Can't see repeating for the moment. They're all bunched up. I, I can see Denny Lynn, Faithful Charles, Tiger Man, and Hesperus in front. Monica seems to be boxed in. He'll never make it unless he gets away from the rails. They're coming up to the course bushes, and I can see them better. It's Jenny Lind in the lead. She's setting a tremendous pace. She'll never keep it up. Faithful Charles the length behind. Tiger Man's well placed and going strongly. Hesperus is there. It's a terrific race. They're coming down to Tatham Corner. Jenny Lind still leading by a leg. Tiger Man's coming up. He's past Faithful Charles. They're on the corner now. Jenny Lind still leading. What a magnificent city. But it's uphill now, and Tiger Man's closing the gap. Tiger a second. There's Hesperus right on the rails. Hello, look at Autolycus. Autolycus is coming away on the outside. Wait, you make it yet? No, he can't do it. It's Tiger Man, please. He's still on the field. How do you want to Tiger Man? Tiger Man will win it. Tiger Man. Tiger Man. Tiger Man wins. Max is wrong. Yet of the first three past the post. Tiger Man. Autolycus, Jenny Lynn. That puts us among the old so rad. Oh, wait a minute. There's an objection. Yes, the red flag's going up. And there goes the green flag. Objection sustained. Autolycus, Autolycus wins the derby.
a day. I thought we'd never get home at all. Is Mr. Maximus back yet? Yes, madam. He returned about 6.30. 6.30? Oh, he'll be waiting for us. Well, I've got a thirst I wouldn't sell for a thousand. Oh, oh, taxi, please. Yes, sir. Oh, hello. How do you do? Good evening. Did you enjoy the derby? Oh, yes. Every word of it. Can I offer you anything? Oh, thank you. Mr. Maximus gave me a cocktail. He's just changing. He really ought to hurry. Oh. Oh, I'll tell him. Oh, hello, darling. Thank heavens you've come home with this collar, will you? Oh, come on, sweet. Going out there? Yes, I'm off to the Derby banquet. To Christine Shaw? Good Lord, no. I'm going with her father. It's a stag party. I say, sweet, he's been moving today. Yes, I guess some things did. Southwich made me the most marvellous offer. He wants me to be a newspaper prophet on the Daily Sun. I say, did you see the race? Where were you? In the car. He's offering the most wonderful money. Yeah. Have you accepted? Oh, my darling, what do you speak? There. I'm starting tomorrow, you know, looking for the future and all that. I like old Southwood. You seem to like his daughter, too. Well, she's been rather a brick, you know, and she's, she, she's waiting now to take me across in the car. That's sweet of her. I say, darling, what's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. Oh, now, come on, sunshine. What, what is worrying you? Well, I thought we might have been together this evening. Yes, I, I know, but you see, I've, I've got to go to the bank, but after all, it was arranged by... By Christine's father. Yes, I... darling, I'd take you if I could, but it, it, it's a stag party. And after all, now, you must realize that from a business point of view... Here's your jacket. Thank you, darling. Now, don't be hurt. After all, now, just think, think what it's leading to, our future. I'm wondering what it's going to be like. What? Jack, it's time we start. Coming. We... Darling, you're being rather silly and petulant. Here's your coat. Thank you, darling. <laughs> I say, you're not upset because she's taking me across, are you? Should I be? Oh, no, 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 darling. Darling. Now, let's meet afterwards and have food together, just the two of us. Do you really think you can eat two meals in one evening? Darling, you're being rather childish. Am I? Yes. It's only because I love you rather a lot. Next. Well, goodbye, sweet. Oh, here's your hat. Oh, um, thanks. Bye-bye. Your Grace, my lords and gentlemen, I pray silence for your chairman, the Lord Southwood. Grace, lords, gentlemen, the king. The toast is His Majesty the King. Your Grace, my lords and gentlemen, you may smoke. And no, no, I don't drink smoke. I wish you could predict the winner of the oak, Mr. Maxwell. I can't predict your order. Your Grace, my lords and gentlemen, pray silence. For your church. Your grace, my lords and gentlemen, I hope you'll agree with me that we've had a very pleasant day, particularly me. <laughs> well, really, Miss Shorey, it's all right. I've only come to fetch Father. <laughs> Isn't he speaking now? I expect I'll be at least an hour. Oh, I don't mind waiting. <laughs> If the committee knew there was a lady in the club, they would think it was the end of the world. I have an announcement. My Lord Chairman, Your Grace, my lords and gentlemen, pray silence for Mr. Maximus. <laughs> and my Lord Chairman, uh, Your Grace, my lords, and uh, uh, the gentlemen. First of all, I would like to express my indebtedness to Lord Southwood and to all those who have helped me. Looking into the future, I see trouble, terrible trouble for myself. <laughs> I'm sorry you all have got to leave. <laughs> if I dare to foretell the winner of another race, I shall most certainly be assassinated by the bookmakers. <laughs> if my prophecy is wrong, 
then uh, I shall have the public themselves on my heels. <laughs> who then Lord South, who will undoubtedly say... Oh, this is Oh, well, I... Have. As the guard on the magnet... Hello, this is Christine Sean. Right. Oh, it's so exciting here. Yes. Your husband's absolutely for the line of the evening. And such a brilliant speech. Hello? Hello? I mean, cut off. It will mean a greater public. What's the matter? Didn't you get Max? Christine Shaw. That's impossible. Yes. It's a stag party. That's what I thought. Remy. Here's a pretty kettle of fish. What's she driving at? You heard? You haven't got cloth ears. Anything I can do? What are you doing? I'm going. What do you mean, going? I'm leaving. Oh, but why, my dear? Why? Isn't it perfectly obvious? But you don't realize what you're doing. I can't let you go. And it's no mother down. Where will you go? What will you do? Mother, please, please, Renny. Mother. I told you. I'm going. What are you doing? Riding a bicycle. Hello. Running to match your fool. Hello. Hello. Give me a line, please. Hello? Oh, I see. Um, just wait a moment. We live in a frightening in many ways, a very cruel world. And if I can alleviate by even the smallest fraction the burden of my fellow men, then I shall feel that my life and this gift with which it is so curiously bound has not been entirely wasted. <laughs> Why, hello, Christine. I didn't know there are loud ladies in here. They don't. Excuse me, will you? Thank you. Hello? Oh, hello, Mama. Going away? Why is she going away? Oh, no. 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 She's making a mistake. You must talk to her. No, 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 no. I, I can't come at the moment, but you must, you must talk to her. I'll get back as soon as I can. Yes, yes, hurry, stop her. Max, what's the matter? That's queer. Hello? Hello? Of course she... she rang off. What was it? I thought I saw... Saw what? My mother. Max! Christine. banquet business.
silly of me. I fell downstairs. Uh, shall we fetch a doctor? No, no. What I... happened? Are you hurt? I'm all right. I just fell. Where do you think you're going? I'm coming back with you. That's right, darling. Really? I want to talk to you about Max. Oh. Oh. Oh, darling. Hello. Hello, get me Mr. Maximus, please. Yes, you know where he is. Bernie. Bernie. I must say something to you. Quickly. No, no, not now. I must, I must. It's about Max. That gift is bad. It's no good. He must... Mm. There's a call. Yes. It's Christine Shaw. She's what I said before. She's the power. He must give it up. He must give her up. Tell him. Tell him. I'll tell him. Bringing unhappiness to you both, darling. They say one sees very clearly in the face of... Oh, oh God. God. Oh, Max, you think you're so intelligent. You couldn't even see your mother's death. I did see it. Or almost did. Just after she telephoned to me. But I put it away from me. Christine was beside me. Christine. What your mother said was true. It's Christine's presence that gives you the power to see. Why, you've no gift at all when she's not with you. I feel she's very close tonight. Max. But it's as if there was a bond between us. A queer sort of sympathy. It's stronger than I am. Is it stronger than your love for me? Oh, please, God, I hope not. Oh, Max. Is things becoming a mania with you? You've got to break this bond. Not for my sake, but for the sake of your sanity. I can't break it. It's going on. I know it. Weakness isn't going to help. Oh, Max, I'm fighting a battle for your mind, and I've got to win it. We've got to go back to the old life. Benny, don't you realize what's happening to me? I can't go back. If you'll only use your strength of will. What strength of will? Against. Against. What? I love you more than anything else in the world. But if you go on with this, then I will leave you. But it may be a gift from God. Or the devil. Going back. Yeah. Come on. Do you mind if I stay here a bit? I'd like to do some thinking. I lie. Don't worry. Don't be too long. I won't. Hi, detective. I meant what I said, you know. You always do. You will give it up? I never argue with a lady. <laughs> you don't catch cold, dear. I won't.
Carlton speaking. Hello, Carter. Nixon here. Yes, we're right in the bowels of the earth. Yes, under the river. Can you hear the drill? It's deafening here. What are you talking about? There, that's a train passing out, going up to the surface. Carter? <laughs> now look here, Carter, what about this column? Yes, I've got this stuff. Can you run it in the first edition? I'm not sure. This Derby promise is uh, taking up a lot of space. I'll find out when you make it. Okay. Goodbye. Clear. I tell you I'm dead with it. I'm not going on with it. Listen, if you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss it. I'm grateful to you, sir, for the offer you've made me, but I'm definitely not accepting it. But, Max... Now, Christine, don't you try to persuade me. Quite a sudden change in your point of view. I have my reasons. Well, of course, if you feel like that, uh, what is it, Carter? Oh, excuse me, sir, it's Dixon. We've kept that column open for him, and I've got it hanging on the phone now from the uh, Humber Shaft. Oh, yes. You want me to run that Humber Shaft story, sir? Humber Shaft. What do you think? Well, as far as that the goes, Humber I can Shaft. hold the stuff over to Wednesday. That's queer. You see this? The man was Shaft. talking to me about the Humber Shaft. Max. The Humber Shaft. There's going to be a disaster. The water sweeping in will carry the men away. Mr. Mr. Max. Mr. I tell you I'm right. You've got to warn them. What do you mean? Did I say I wouldn't go on? I must go on. Here's your first prophecy. The Humber Shaft will be destroyed. Splash it across your front page. Give it all the space you can. You're crazy. Save the poor devils while there's time. What do you think I am? I'd run myself in for the biggest libel accident of the century. I was right about the train, wasn't I? But there are millions of pounds involved. There are hundreds of lives involved. He's right, Father. You've got to run it. I will not. Then I'll go elsewhere. No other paper will run it either. You mean no one will warn the men? Go down Fleet Street and see. I'm not going down Fleet Street. I'm going up to the Humber. Now. Next. Yeah? My car's outside. Can I take you? Yes, come on. Yes, he's here. Arrived about an hour ago. Crazy isn't the word for it. He's been telling the manager that the tunnel's going to blow up or something. Yeah, and the news spread to the workings, and the men came streaming up like flies. Yeah, he's talking to him now. I tell you, if you go down today, half of you will never come up alive. You've got to believe me. You think I came all this way just to fool you? There's going to be a disaster. Nothing can prevent it. Don't you take any notice of him. The man's crazy. You want to be caught like so many rats? The Daily Sun wouldn't publish my warnings. Your own managers refused to listen to me. They said I was talking superstitious nonsense. But it isn't nonsense. Was I right about the Manchester Express? Yes. Was I wrong about the Derby? Yes. Can any one of you look me in the eyes and tell me I'm wrong now? Yes. You're mad! Get back to your work! All of you! I came up here to warn you, to save you from the terror which I know is coming. I implore you, I beseech you, for the sake of your wives, your mothers and your sons, don't go on the night shift! Stop! All of you! If you're not mad, where are you going? Are you going to throw yourself out of work for the sake of a dusty trickster? Hey! How's the work? Clutch what I said! There's the signal for the night shift. The train's waiting to take you down. Get to your work, all of you. The man who refuses is through! Oh, and you can take it or leave it! Are you going down? Uh, they'll go down. Well, what are you waiting for? The shaft's perfectly safe, safe as your own houses. Get back to work, every one of you. The train's waiting to take you down.
Yes, they're going down again. Yeah, I'll ring through later. Those poor devils. You're not to blame, whatever happens. Why couldn't I convince them? Noreni was right. I shouldn't have gone on with it. She wasn't right. You've got something that belongs to the world. You've got to go on. You believe that? I know it. Perhaps it's woman's intuition. Or perhaps it's just because I love you. Why do you look like that? Because you love me. Is that wrong? I don't know. Max, I love you. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, are you satisfied now? No. It's on your own head, McGregor. So happy. I'll be glad when this ship's over. Oh, snap out of it. You're safe enough. Find that dungeon. You sure you're all right? I'm all right. Are you ready? Oh! No, wait! Put the wind at them. Murderer, that's what he is. He ought to be hanged. Miss, are you going to stand here and do nothing? No. Or are you going to show Maximus he can't murder our people and get away with it? Oh. Yes. tragedy in the Humber Shaft was brought about by panic. Panic which is directly traceable to the so-called prophecy of the prisoner of the bar. The very nature of the prisoner's activities made it vital that he should keep his name before the public. He chose a very terrible means of achieving that object. Two hundred bodies have been recovered. A hundred and ten 
are still lying in that shop yonder. The deaths of these men must be laid at the door of one man only. The prisoner. I call my first witness, Miss Christine Shaw. Miss Christine Shaw. Miss Christine Shaw. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence strike at this court should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. You are Miss Christine Shaw? Yes. And you are attending here on some Yes. I understand that you were present when the prisoner, as he alleges, foresaw the disaster. I was with him when the Claiborne stake came on him. Well, if you like to call it then, the prisoner just lost his post on the Daily Sun. He just resigned it. Well, I suppose we might do that. He had resigned it. Quite, quite. We don't even quarrel about a word. At any rate, at this juncture, the prisoner was out of employment. Yes. And so he promptly made a prophecy, which was bound to attract public attention. That's not why he made it. You don't think it was? You drove the prisoner up to the Humber? Yes. You were there when he told the workers there would be a disaster? Yes. The workers were alarmed. One might almost say they were in a state of panic. What they got to do with it? Were they alarmed? Of course they were alarmed. His prophecy has come true. Exactly. Then do you not think, from what you saw, that the workers' alarm was calculated to bring about a state of tension, hardly conducive to safety? I don't understand. Come, come, this short. You're trying to force me to speak against him. I am asking you if you don't believe that the accident was due to the prisoner's prophecy. I wasn't in the shaft. How am I to know? Answer the question, Miss Shaw. I can't answer. You are here to give evidence. I didn't want to come. Why not? Was it because you thought your evidence would hurt the prisoner's case? I didn't think about it at all. Oh, well, perhaps you will be good enough to think now. You were present, I understand, when the accused prophesied the Manchester Express disaster. Yes. Are you aware that had the prisoner not stopped the train, it would have cleared the points and the collision would have been avoided? Miss Sean? I didn't know that. Well, I tell you to now as a fact. Do you still believe the prisoner is a genuine clairvoyant? He fought her the derby winner. He's not the first person to bring off a hundred to one chance. How do you know this wasn't merely a lucky coincidence? Why do you ask me that? How can any of us know what is the truth? Then you agree with me. You are not sure that the gift is genuine. That's not what I said. Thank you. But... Thank you, Miss John. That is all. I have no questions to ask this witness. Call Arthur Watts. Arthur Watts? Arthur Watts? Down. <laughs> I let him down. <laughs> they told me you were going to leave him. I haven't left him. <laughs> you love him, don't you? Yes. I wanted to take him away from you. Do you still want him? He doesn't care for me. But you care for him, and you can help him. I hate to say this to you, but I've got to make you understand. You see, the gift only comes when you're near him. It's got to stop. It's got to. You mustn't see him again. You are telling us that it was panic caused the disaster? Yes, panic. And that but for this man's prophecy, your fellow workers would have been alive today. As God is my judge, I believe they would. I do love him, sir. Yes, we both love him. But if this happens, I'm thinking of. If this thing goes on, I believe he'll go mad. Oh, don't you understand? It's up to you. I'll never see him again. Promise? Never. After today. And that, members of the jury, concludes the case for the prosecution. Members of the jury, my client is an innocent man. Many times throughout history, men have stood 
much as my client stands now, pilloried by mankind for no greater sin than the possession of a gift which the world has failed to understand. Knowing the strength of my case, I propose to call two witnesses only, my client himself and his wife, Rene. I call Mrs. Maximus. Mrs. Maximus. I believe in my husband's power. I didn't want him to use it. But he felt if he did use it, he could help people. Did you believe it was genuine? It is genuine. I only wish it weren't. I see. And has it always been genuine? Yes, always. So that right back in those old days, when the great Maximus and Joseph were somewhat in different music hall term, earning a somewhat indifferent salary, even then you believed that your husband was a genuine clairvoyant. No, not then. He was not genuine. Well, you see, I mean... Was he or was he not? That's not a fair question. It is a perfectly fair question. Answer me directly. Was your husband a charlatan or not? Our act was a professional routine. A fake routine? Yes, of course it was. It had to be, don't you think? You have admitted that your husband was a professional trickster. Thank you. Oh, no, but the, the gift that's different. The one was fake, the other was not. I don't wish to detain you any further. But I must explain. This way, if you can. I don't think all. This way, Miss, please. Maximus, please. Mr. Maximus. <laughs> I swear by Almighty God that the evidence which I give this court should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Mr. Maximus, I have only a few questions. Why did you foretell the Humbershaft disaster? Because I foresaw it. You must tell what you see. I must tell what I see. You believed you could have saved these men's lives? I could have saved them. You were not prompted by any thought of gain. I was not. Tell the court. Is this gift genuine, or is it not? It is genuine. God help me. Thank you. That is all. I find your statement most interesting, Mr. Maximus. So you really believe in this clairvoyant business yourself? Of course I believe in it. Quite. It's a gift, isn't it? I think that's what you call it. You have the effrontery to assert that you can foretell the future. You claim omnipotence. You have a gift from God himself. I never said that. Well, then perhaps it's from the other source. Is that it? Perhaps you'll tell us it's a gift from the devil. Somebody else once suggested that. If this gift is genuine, why not demonstrate it here? It's simple enough. Give us a taste of your quality, Maximus. Prove that you are genuine and my case falls to the ground. Prophesy, Maximus. Put on your act. Demonstrate your art. Tell the jury what will be their verdict. Prophesy, Maximus. Prophesy. Prophesy. But I can't. I can't do order. But you can for money. But I... I can't see. Of I course you can't. And I'll tell you why. Because you're a charlatan and a faker. If you're not, why did your wife threaten to leave? Why did your wife threaten to leave? I see the men. Ah, that's better. No members of the jury watch him perform. A hundred and ten living men. They're tapping their way out by the eastern shaft. The eastern shaft. They're weak. They're famished. But they're alive. They're tapping their way out. They're at the surface. Soon, news will come. News. Soon. 
understand that what you have just told us is the truth. These men are free and alive. In these circumstances, I have no option but to suggest to the foreman of the jury that if uh, you'll excuse me, my lord, we the jury are agreed. Our verdict is not guilty. <laughs> Now, that didn't hurt much, did it? If nothing else, this certainly was a film. It's not clairvoyance so much as, say, deja vu in reverse. That would be Uvujed. Uvujed? Uh Uh-oh. I think I've invoked the name of an ancient one, and I probably better leave before he gets here. So please join me next week when I have the opportunity to sterilise you with fear during another terror-filled excursion to the dark side of the public domain on the Schlocky Horror Picture Show. Toodles!